What's up, everybody? We had a viewer ask what was inside of a TDH-8. Uh, specifically, I think they were looking for like what the microprocessor was. So, here's a TDH-8. Let's see what's inside. Meet you over at the bench. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get started by tearing this thing down. Uh, see what's inside of, his, of this radio. Let's uh, get all the major stuff off here. We'll take the battery off. We'll take the knob off. Let's look. Nope, it doesn't have the secret knob. The secret knob coolness of the uh, Baofeng UV5R, which I'll use here in just a second, in case you guys are not aware. Um, all right, so let's see here. All right, looks like we've got some torque screws uh, in here. This is a T2. And we'll start by taking these out. All right. And then we need to take off our... little lockdown nuts here on our both our volume knob and our antenna connector doesn't want to come off there it goes and then here's that little trick I was talking about I'll always keep a UV 5R on hand because you might want to just take this knob off and I don't know if you can see there's little indentions or little uh, protrusions on the inside of the volume knob that just happen to fit this nut. So you can just put this on here and bada boom, bada bing, comes right off. So, you know, there's another thing that the UV5R is good for. Keep laying around. Okay, so we've got those off, and we've got the screws out. Let's see if this thing lifts out of here. Oh, yeah. Actually, kind of nicely. All right, what have we got going on this side? Let's take a look. All right, we can clear our volume knobs, and we have... All right, the speaker is directly soldered to the board, so let's get our soldering pencil out here and disconnect that. All right. We will take these off. And we'll have to put those back on probably underneath the microscope in a little bit. All right, so now what do we have? We've got some Phillips screws holding the board to the aluminum frame. So we will take those off. Um, and as usual, we have a screw hiding behind the LCD. So, let's see how this LCD, okay, it's just clipped into the board. This corner is being a little temperamental. Don't want to force anything to risk any damage to our ribbon cable. There it came. All right, and there, oh, that, that was, uh, okay, so that piece was on here, that came off, all right. And there is our screw that was left over. Okay, it looks like this is also one of these radios where uh, 
you can't get the antenna RF connector out of the uh, aluminum back plane here. So we have to desolder the center pin. So we are going to get our glasses on and we will once again clean our tip here and let's see if we can try to get this to lift off well I have I missed any screws oh I did <laughs> looks like we've got one more screw right here through probably what is the RF amplifier chip on the back so now let's go back here and I bet you this thing lifts off a lot easier now Yep, there it went. Okay, so now we can lift the board right off of the uh, heat sink frame. And there it is. So there is our TDH8 board. And uh, there's the back side. All right, so let's, uh, let's get our scope up here. Okay, so this is, after the fact, me coming to you uh, with a voiceover, because uh, as it turns out, my microscope <laughs> source did not have a mic input. So we're going to uh, recreate this as best as possible. So here you can see, uh, we've, we're looking at the front side of the board, the TID H8 RDA PCB 1G Z2. Um, I was pointing to the microphone and then that was the speaker uh, terminals where we disconnected the speaker from. Um, then we were looking at these chips that are on the board. I'm not quite sure what this one is. I don't think I looked this one up. That is just a 2904 chip. And this here, I think, is uh, uh, obviously, especially with the name BT422, I think this is the Bluetooth module. You can see the antenna there at the top of that little uh, daughter board. Um, so this would be the Bluetooth for the over-the-air programming. And uh, we're trying to get a, a number off of this chip. It looks to me that it is a... Uh, Let's see if we get a little bit better view here. It looks like a TLSR 8261. Let's see if we get a little bit better reflect. Yeah, TL, or maybe a TL8R 8261. Can't quite tell if that's an S or an 8. TL8R 8261. And then the next line is FT2. BET24. So maybe uh, somebody can verify that um, FT28ET24. Maybe that is a E and 8 on the second line as well. TLSR8261 or TL8R8261. But uh, I'm thinking that that must be a Bluetooth chip. Uh, uh, right in the middle of that Bluetooth module. All right, so now I think we look on the back of the board. Uh, yep. And I think uh, now we're going to look here at what uh, I think uh, the viewer was most interested in, which was what is this microprocessor? It is a TA3782F. TA3782F. 
And what's interesting is I can't find anything on that chip. Um, I think in the conclusion uh, of the video, I state the same thing. I'm not familiar with this one, and I don't think I was successful in finding anything about it. Um, this is a 24C64, which should be an E squared prom. And there is the radio on a chip, the infamous AT1846S, uh, very common in the Baofeng radios. <clears throat> this chip here, not 100% on this one either. It obviously says audio-K 2210 right on the top of it. I don't know if that is another audio amplifier um, or not. Um, if you know what that chip is, feel free to chime in in the comments as well. Here you can see our heat uh, little pads, thermal pads. Uh, pulling those off to see the transistors underneath. And looks like that is an HTL. 7G06SO11P or S011P. HTL 7G06S011P. And there are two of them. Same chip, I believe. HTL 7G06SO11P. You can see here some of the filtering here, section of the board. Uh, here's another chip up here, TDA2822G. I believe that that is an audio amplifying chip as well. Uh, would make some sense being located close to the headphone jack. Well, I think that that pretty much summarizes everything that is inside the radio. If you guys have any uh, thing that you would like to add in the comments, uh, discuss what any of those chips that uh, I was unsuccessful in finding, if you know what they are, uh, please, please let us know. And here we're looking underneath the display, not too much else to see. And uh, I think we'll be switching back to actually having audio now. Okay. I don't know if I should do one of those magic things again or if we should just go ahead. You know what? Let's not do it this time. Let's go ahead and reassemble it and uh, we'll do it in fast speed. All right. Okay, we've got the thermal pads back on. We'll try to uh, get our fingerprints off of our display. All right, that looks pretty good. And uh, let's see, where were we? I think we'll start by setting this back down into our frame. All right, if you saw I had a little bit of a problem there when I was reassembling it. The speaker wire was kept laying over the down button and uh, wouldn't allow it to function properly. So I finally had to reach in there with the tweezers and hold that wire out of the way while we finished assembly. So let's head back over to the desk. Okay, well, I guess now we know what's inside of a TDH8. So I looked up uh, real quick in my transition, just from the bench to here, 
what I can't find this uh, microprocessor. So um, I found some references actually on a Russian site to another radio, I think a Radtel uh, radio with the same microprocessor in it, but they were also saying that they could not find any information on it. So if anybody has any info on what the CPU is in this thing, please comment below. Um, the, uh, let's see here, the HTL7G06SO11P, uh, those dual chips in there, they are 100 to 600 megahertz 11 watt amplifier chips, 7.2 volts. Uh, so there is, uh, I guess, your power from this radio. Uh, and they're claiming 10 watts out of the radio. And if you remember from uh, testing the updated radio they sent me back, uh, it's pretty close to it. So uh, that makes some sense. Um, of course, the AT1846S is the radio on a chip. Kind of surprised. Uh, it seems like all of the hype recently has been around the BK4819. But... Uh, this, this one seems to still be doing a good job. It's what's in a lot of those, uh, Baofeng radios as well. Um, and yes, that HK, HK24C64 was an I squared C EEPROM. And, uh, the, the, uh, TDA2822G was a audio amplifier. So with that, if you like these kind of videos, uh, you know, doing a radio teardown, uh, see what's inside. Um, you know, please like and subscribe, comment below, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. It's a lot of fun tearing these apart and seeing what's in them. Seven threes, everybody.